In this video, I want to show you how to calculate uh, the various numerical summary statistics for a uh, numerical variable. So uh, we have this little data set here, and the variable that we want to analyze is account balance. Right? So account balance is a ratio scale variable, numerical, so we can uh, use various summary statistics to summarize it. Now, the best practice is uh, we define this uh, variable using a name so that we can reference it. So I'm going to highlight this uh, <clears throat> values and I'm going to go to uh, formula and under formula, I'm going to use define name and I'm going to give it a name, right? So the name I'm going to call it AB, right? Account balance and say, okay. So from now on, every time I want to calculate a statistic, I can just use AB to represent this range of data, right? So uh, in statistics, there's various ways to summarize um, a numerical uh, variable, and you can use a measure of location, measure of variability, and five number summary. Uh, if you want to find out what they mean and how they can be used in statistics, you can see my other video on descriptive statistics. And for this one, I'm going to focus on just doing the calculations. So if you want to calculate the mean, uh, the best way of doing it in Excel, if you want to do it quickly, is to use an Excel function, right? So Excel function, uh, you can use this icon here, you click on it, and there's various functions that you can use. There's financial function, math and trick function, statistical function, and so on. It's about over a hundred somewhat functions that you can use. Or you can just type it in. So we, in, in our case, we can, we're gonna just type it in, right? So in order for us to calculate the mean, we use average, right? So we type in equal sign average. And remember that the data that we want to calculate the statistics for is defined as AB. So what I have to do is just type in AB and here we go, right? So that's the, the mean. The mean is the average. So it's actually really simple. On the other hand, if you want to summarize a numerical variable uh, using one number, the other way of doing it is to middle number. The middle number is called the median. Again, we just type in equal sign, median, and the range is AB. And as you can see, that that's actually pretty straightforward. So uh, once you enter that formula, uh, you can actually cut, cut the numbers very really quickly. Now, uh, in addition to the, the measure of location, you can also uh, look at three different measures of variability. And variability is about how spread out the data is. Uh, so the first one is range. Range is basically the maximum minus the minimum. So how do we do that in Excel? Well, we can you can do equal sign the max, right, which is a max function, minus the minimum, which is the mean function, and here we go. Uh, so it's actually very straightforward. Now, uh, for standard deviation, there are various functions in Excel to calculate the standard deviation. The one that we should use is the standard deviation for a sample, right? Now, if you type in ST, you can actually see that there, there's the stdv.p, stdv.s, and so on. Uh, the old function that I still use, uh, I begin to use it, you know, a long time ago, is STDEV. STDEV is up down there, is the standard deviation for a sample. So that's what we use. 99% uh, of the time, you should not use STDEV.p because the data that we have usually is not from a population. So we should use the standard deviation for uh, a sample or STDEV if you want to do that. So again, very simple, STDEV give you the standard deviation. Uh, now the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is uh, 
the difference between the first quartile and the third quartile. So again, you can you can do that very straightforward using an Excel uh, function and a formula. So the third quartile is Q U A L T I L E dot E X C. Now, if you actually go and take a look at these functions, uh, there are three quartile functions in Excel. They sometimes give different results. So we need to be very careful. The one that we use here is uh, one of the standard ones um, that is according to the international standard. So we're going to use X. Uh, e X C, right? Now there are textbooks and statisticians who would use quartile or quartile dot inc. So it's, you have to be uh, a little bit careful. Usually it won't make a lot of difference, but sometimes it could make a little bit of difference. Okay, so for standardization purposes, we're going to use quartile dot exc, and again the data set is AB. Now we have to tell Excel whether this is a first quartile or the third quartile. So if you say third quartile, we say comma three. And so that's the third quartile. And then we're going to do the first quartile. So minus Q U A L T I L E dot E X C A B comma one. All right? So the third the third quartile minus the third quartile. Okay? So here we go. So that's the way that we can calculate the mass availability. Now, in addition to these measures, uh, the we we can also calculate what we call the five number summary. The five number summary give us uh, 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 the set of numbers that we need to do use for a box plot, and these five numbers also give us a sense of uh, the shape of the distribution as well. Right. So in order to do that again. Uh, we have experience in doing all of them. So let's just repeat it again. So for the minimum is equal sign mean, right? So that's very straightforward. F first quartile, we have done that before. So we do it again is Q U A L T I L E dot E X C A B. And the, oops. Now, this is where uh, Excel would remind us that you have to tell us whether this is the first quartile or third quartile. If it's the first quartile is one. So here we go. Now, the median, actually, now that we talk about it, there's another way of calculating the median. The median, conceptually, is the second quartile, right? So we can either use the quartile function or we can actually use the median. I'm going to stick with the median for now, ME. I A N A B, and that's the median, the third quartile, third quartile, Q U A T L E dot E X C. And this time I'm not going to make a mistake. I'm going to specify this is a third quartile. And finally, oops, I, so there is a, uh, a typo. So the good thing is that. Excel would catch you with the typo. And here we go. And the maximum. So the maximum is max. And so by using very simple Excel function, we can calculate all the summary statistics that we need to summarize a set of data. Now, there's another way of doing all that if you want to do it just in one step uh, that would give you not all of these statistics, but some of the statistics. So I'm going to take that with opportunity to show you now, right? So in order for us to do that, you need to have the the data analysis add-in installed already. Uh, so uh, I have shown you in another video how to install the data analysis in. So, uh, but you can check whether you have it, right? So if you click on the data ribbon up, up there, and if you see data analysis at the top right-hand corner, that means that it's already installed. Otherwise, you have to install that. Now, if you click on 
data analysis. There are various functions, uh, programs that is inside that we would use for uh, different statistical analysis. And some of them we will go, go over in another video. Uh, for us, uh, what we want to use is to use descriptive statistics. So you go down and you find descriptive statistics and you say, you highlight the program and you say, okay. Uh, now, uh, at this point in time, the input and output for this program is quite standard, right? So you, in the first section, you specify uh, where the data that you want to analyze is, and then you have to tell the system what you want to see in the output section, right? So in this case, I can actually type in AB uh, and see what happened, right? So if I type in AB, uh, you, 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 it's, this, the program says, well, you still have to specify your, your output. So you can see that if I type in AB, which is the name of the range, uh, Excel automatically would uh, substitute that for the data range, or you can actually type in the data range as well. Uh, you have to tell Excel whether the data is grouped in columns. In this case, it's indeed the case. You have to tell the system whether the label is in the first row. So remember when we define the data range, we did not include the first row. So we don't leave that blank. Uh, if you do it directly, you, you should uh, include the first row and then you click on this label. Now, what we have to do now is to tell the system where to put the output. The best practice is to put it into a new worksheet. So this is the default, so you don't have to do anything. And then you have to tell uh, Excel what kind of output you want to see. There are four options that you can, you can choose all of them. You can choose one of them. Uh, you can choose whatever you want, right? So I'm going to uh, want to specify summary statistics. That's what I want. Uh, uh, later on, if you want to calculate a confidence interval, you can actually choose that. Uh, we will go over that in a future video. Uh, these two uh, largest and smallest is not that useful, so I'm going to leave it. And all you have to do is say, okay. So you can see that it doesn't take much to specify that. If you say, okay, here's the output. Uh, if you include the name of the column, the column one will be replaced with that name. Uh, you can see that uh, Excel does give you uh, a lot of the same statistics that we want. Uh, if you actually want to look at it a little bit bigger, And I'm going to just move it over here. Uh, and I'm going to just zoom it so that you can actually take a look at it a little bit better. Right? You can see that we have the mean, we have the median, we have the standard deviation, maximum and minimum. Now, the unfortunate thing is that if you use the data analysis add-in, uh, you would not have the quartiles that you actually want in order for you to put the five number summary together. So that's the deficiency of the data analysis setting. So for numerical statistics, uh, I prefer just using the Excel function. As I can see that it's actually pretty straightforward for us to do. So uh, that's it for this video. And uh, we would uh, talk about uh, other statistical calculation using Excel in a future video. Goodbye.